After eight years in development, Jonathan Blow has finally released his newest venture, The Witness, after the success of his first game, the puzzle platformer Braid. Now, I loved my experience with Braid, it holds a very special place in my heart. So as you can imagine, I was extremely excited for The Witness. But now after playing it, I'm here to tell you today that you don't need to play The Witness. If you've watched the many trailers for this game over the years, you've seen that you walk around this beautiful deserted island solving line puzzles. Yeah, you know, they kind of look like those mazes you did as a kid where it helps if you go backward from the finish to figure them out. Which I thought, cool, that sounds fun, but I'm sure there's much more to it than that. I mean, it's just a trailer, they don't want to spoil other things that happen, right? Well, no, turns out the trailer only showed this because that's pretty much all there is to it. You walk and you solve line puzzles, and then you walk some more and you solve different line puzzles, and then you... you guessed it. Now don't get me wrong, if you love puzzles, this game is actually right up your alley because there's a ton of these things to solve. But I think it made me reflect on myself and made me realize that I'm not much of a puzzle guy. I wanted to start off by talking about the things I really did like in this game, because it does a lot right. The opening area actually does a really good job of teaching you how the game works without saying anything. In fact, The Witness has taken away all the normal gaming conventions of a title screen or selecting a file, instead the game just starts. Even when you pause the game, it's really just your character closing their eyes. And you get those little sunspots that you want to chase with your eye, but they keep moving when you look at them. Anyway, you start by learning that you're supposed to draw your line to the goal, and when you do, it will light up a power line to the next board. And eventually, these screens open up new panels to progress in the game. Like I said, this part is great, and it fluidly taught me the basics without breaking any immersion. When you leave the first area, the whole game opens up. You can go wherever you like and complete puzzles in any order. The island is absolutely stunning to look at, and I had the most fun just exploring what it had to offer. As you walk around, you'll discover these people that have been turned into stone, and this is where things start to get interesting. What I became most captivated with was the mystery of the whole island. Why did these people turn out this way? What happened here? How did I get here? And I spent most of the game trying to figure these questions out. There's obvious remnants of people living here, and recently. I found myself finding new breadcrumbs quite often in the beginning and going, oh snap, what is this? But within these observations lies my two biggest problems with the game. Learning the puzzles, and a lack of any reward for solving said puzzles. Everything interesting in The Witness, the scenery, the mystery, the hidden clues, all of it takes a back seat to puzzles. Which is fine, it is a puzzle game after all, but the emphasis was a little too strong for my taste. There's 500 some odd puzzles in this game, and the majority of your time spent will be looking at these screens solving them, or attempting to solve them. I know I said the tutorial area taught you the basics very well, but from there the teaching gets a bit more sketchy. Littered throughout the island are panels meant to show you the new mechanics it throws in, like black and white squares or tetris blocks. And at first these seemed alright, it would start very basic and build from there. But without any actual rules spelled out for you, it's easy to misinterpret the rules themselves. I thought these black and white panels were trying to tell me that you need to go above all white boxes and under all black boxes. But what it's really trying to tell me is to bisect any black and white sections. So as you could expect, I didn't quite grasp the harder versions. The Tetris puzzles were some of the most frustrating ones for me to solve, as it doesn't clearly tell you that some of the pieces can be rotated or moved around. So some solutions seemed outright impossible due to what I thought the game had taught me. I totally get the appeal of teaching without telling, but sometimes the instructions were too open for interpretation. You have the freedom to leave and do a different puzzle if you get frustrated, but that doesn't help if you don't know how to solve any of the puzzles. This wasn't my biggest gripe, however. By far my worst problem was the lack of any tangible reward for solving these puzzles. 90% of the time when you spend 20 minutes on a series of difficult screens and finally solve them, the reward is more puzzles, and these ones are even harder. If you're the kind of person where the accomplishment comes from solving the puzzle itself, this is probably fine. But if the puzzles aren't fun in the first place for the player, this is adding insult to injury. Solving each problem doesn't leave me with satisfaction, it normally just causes me to say, oh, okay because half the time I just messed around until I got it randomly anyway. It made me feel dumb, and that's a crappy feeling when the game repeats this over and over again. Sometimes it'll reward you with literally nothing, as some of these puzzles are just meant to teach you the mechanics. And sometimes it'll open up a room with random stuff scattered about and clues about the island. I put that in major air quotes because it really is just emptiness disguised as gratification. I'll look for any sort of help or guidance in the rest of my journey, but no, it's just more statues. It pulls a lost and will answer my question, but in the process leave me with more questions. Even worse are these little audio logs you'll find scattered around the island. 
Island. The first time I found one, I was so intrigued. Maybe this will help me with the puzzles I've been struggling with so far. Give me some sort of clue or help, please. No, instead it's just a pretentious quote from literature or Albert Einstein. A ship owner was about to send to sea an emigrant ship. He knew that she was old and not well built at the first. The game is teasing me. Just when you think you've made some headway or can piece something together, it leaves you with sugar-coated nothingness that leaves you feeling unsatisfied. Now, don't get me wrong, I feel like I have to re-emphasize. If you like puzzle games, I bet you'll really enjoy it. Of course, eventually some puzzles do activate these lasers, which is the main goal of the game. You need to unlock seven of them to reach the ending, which is not all of them, by the way. Unlike most other puzzle games, where once you know the solution, the game kinda becomes meaningless, The Witness actually has a lot of replayability because you can tackle areas you never even finished in future playthroughs. And there's such a large number of sheer puzzles that even if you know the correct way to solve each one, you won't remember every single solution, so it wouldn't be repetitive after just one playthrough. Not to mention that there actually is more stuff to solve than regular puzzles on screens, but that was such a big revelation for me that I won't spoil it for you, because it ended up being my favorite part of the game. Let's just say that puzzles end up being on more than just computer monitors. I was just discouraged because the parts I wanted to see more of were sorely lacking. Even when you finish the game, you're still left with as many questions as you started with, which was disappointing. Though, knowing Jonathan Blow, I would not be surprised if there were more intriguing endings if you completed the game 100%, but to me, it's not worth slogging through the game again. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you're expecting this game to have more than puzzles, don't. There's no denying that Jonathan Blow is a genius when it comes to this stuff. He did things with puzzles I would have never dreamed of. I had to look up the solutions to get to the end, and in the process, realized there's no way I would have finished if I didn't. In the final sections of the game, I found myself saying over and over again, come on, seriously? How would I ever solve that? There's even some puzzles that you can't solve with a guide, which props to him for thinking of every contingency. The puzzles I did enjoy the most were the ones where there are clues in the environment around you to solve. I felt like I had all the pieces in order to succeed, but it could have done a better job of preparing you for the rest of them. Or maybe I'm just an incompetent scrub. Who knows? Hey guys, thanks for watching the first ever You Don't Need to Play. If you've played The Witness, leave me your thoughts on the game in the comments below. I'm sure I disagree with a lot of people, but I hope I'm not the only one who felt this way. If you enjoyed, check out these other videos. You can follow me on Twitter for future updates or random thoughts of the day. Finally, you can always support Snowman Gaming and future projects by contributing on Patreon. You don't have to, it's just there if you want. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty, my friends.